I'm Ashley. I'm going to be developing some black and white film at home for the very first time. I don't need a dark room to develop film. You don't need a dark room to just develop film. That's more if you're going to actually develop prints at home. So I'm only doing the negatives. So all I need is a dark bag to use for while I'm loading the film into the tank. So the tank is light sealed. This is light sealed. So all you gotta do is protect your film. This is obviously developed film. Uh, all you have to do is to protect your film from the light while you load it. Once it's in the tank, it will be light tight. The first step is going to be loading the film into the Patterson tank. So this is the Patterson tank. I think I bought this from B&H Photo. It's pretty much your standard. There are other versions of tanks, but this is the standard one that I was familiar with from high school. So I'm going to stick with the Patterson for now. So all it is is a light tight tank that you can use to develop your film. I'm not sure what this part is. I'm just take it apart and see what bits there are inside of it. So this one comes with two 35 millimeter rolls or one 120 roll. I'm going to probably start with the two 35 millimeter rolls. I'm kind of hesitant to do two, honestly, in case I screw it up completely. I might actually just start with one. I've done this in a really long time. And you kind of have to have a muscle memory, like a feel for it, because you have to do it in incomplete darkness. So for that reason, I'm going to start by practicing loading some film into a reel that is already developed. Easy enough. You just line up so the notches are lined up. Put the leader in like this. I mean, this is the hardest part of getting it started, I think. And you have to do it in complete darkness. So that makes it extra hard. And then once it's there, you can start doing this. And it's it should load it. Mine's kind of funky, maybe because my film's already been developed and it's like kind of bent. I'm gonna hope that it just goes better once I get into the changing bay. Yeah, so just like this. And then once the whole thing is loaded on, then I'm just going to put it back on the spool and then back in the tank. Um, and you and you put this piece here, right? So no light's actually hitting the film. It's only hitting, like it goes in here, but it doesn't hit the film. And then this will go back on the top. So that's, that's kind of the deal here. And we're going to see if that works. The other items that you need inside of the changing tank are... This is a film opener. Apparently it's basically a bottle opener, so I don't really need to spend however much money I spent on that, but I did buy one anyway, um, just in case I had trouble with the film. I don't, however, plan to actually use it most of the time. See, it's actually pretty, it's a pretty solid little thing there. I guess it just would like go on like this and you pop it open. The other item that you need in your changing bag is a pair of scissors because the scissors are just for cutting the leader. Although I don't know why I wouldn't just do that now since my leaders are already out. So you basically cut it straight. Um, some people said it's a little bit easier if you just curve it a little bit like this. I don't know why. Maybe it doesn't catch as much as like the way I was doing it. Did. So that's the leader like that cut. And when I put it on the tank, I won't use the spool first. And I'll be able to just get that right in there. And see, I can sell, I can already tell that, that that fits pretty nicely like that. If the leader's not already out, like it's not on this one, you can actually use a film lead puller outer. I don't know what it's called, but you can use this to pull the lead out. That's what I did on some of the other rolls that I've been using for double exposures. This is my Diana Mini, and it's all plastic. It's a toy camera. It's not amazing. So somehow when I, I think maybe it's not meant for 36, uh, exposure film, maybe just 24, because when I put it in and I try to wind it, I can't ever wind it all the way back. So I'm going to use it inside the changing bag, open it up, and then take the film out inside the changing bag so that I don't ruin my film and that I can try developing it. So this might be the first roll that I do. These are the items I'm going to put inside my changing bag. Here's my changing bag. So all it basically is, is like, it's like a raincoat. It feels like a raincoat. It has a couple of zippers on this end, so two layers of zippers, so it's really light tight inside. So you have to open both zippers, put your stuff inside, zip both zippers up before you use it. Uh, then this end has sleeves like this, see? And you just put your arm inside. I have skinny arms, so I might put it up further on my sweater so there's no light. Put, it, put your arms inside, and then you're using your arms inside the bag, right? And the white's getting in. But that means that you can't see it all. I'll put everything I need inside the bag. So that's the tank. That's this part of the tank. That's the spool. That's the reel. Right? 
and then in this case I'm putting this whole camera in because the film is stuck inside the camera. That might be extra challenging to try to open the camera up and put the film out while inside the bag. And then I have to zip it all up. One zipper. And two zipper. So my roll of film is now in this tank. It wasn't very easy, especially because my cat kept standing on top of the bag. But I did get the roll eventually out of out of the camera that it was stuck inside onto the reel inside the tank. And this is the film that I have in there. It's Arista Edu Ultra Black and White Film 400. And because my other rolls are different ISOs, I'm only just going to do this roll right now. I think I recall that ISO is an important factor in the developing process. So I'm going to just stick to one at a time and hope that it goes okay. And if it doesn't go okay, it's okay because this camera isn't great. Photos aren't going to be great anyway, so it's kind of a great time to practice. Okay, so the other things I need for a developing film. I have a thermometer. I bought the cheapest Patterson thermometer, 12 inch mercury, just to like a little blast tube. You can get fancier ones, but I'm going to start with the basics. Uh, then I've got all my chemicals. So for the chemicals, I have Ilford. This is the, um, so this is the developer, Ilford Ilfosol 3. Ilford Ilfo Stop, and then Ilford Rapid Fixer, and then the Ilford Wash Aid, which isn't completely necessary, but it makes your film cleaner, and I want it clean as possible for scanning. And then next, I have various plastic containers. So this is a measuring container. I didn't really actually know what I was supposed to get. I should have like looked for a list of exact things, but I didn't. So I just kind of got what I thought I needed. Got this graduated cylinder, I think is what it's called. There's also this little guy which is called a graduated something. It's also a graduated thing. So it's got like little measuring marks on it. And oh, this one too. I don't know why I have so many of these things. Okay. Well, I don't really know. I don't really know. But I just bought all the things they had at Unage Photo. Okay, so this is another, I think, graduated cylinder. I'm not a scientist, honestly. Like, this, I, don't, I don't even bake. Okay, so this is a clear container store some chemicals in it, maybe. Uh, the black container is also good for storing chemicals in, probably better. I probably should have just bought black ones. I don't know. I'm going to look that up. And then one more little one, which I, I don't know. Like, why do I need that? I don't know. I just bought three. They weren't very expensive. So there you go. All of my amazing science equipment. We're ready to do some chemistry. I'm going to start with mixing the developer. I've got the, the Ilford developer. I'm going to do it in a one to nine ratio. I'm going to use this little jug here. I've got 1,000 there for milliliters and I'm going to do so 100 will be developer and then the rest will be water. My water is already mixed here and it's 20 degrees Celsius. Probably should have gotten some gloves for this and you know I don't I don't have any so I guess I'll just wash my hands carefully after. All right so I'm pouring the developer into this container and trying to get it to 100 little ears exactly which feels sort of tricky but let's see how that is maybe like a little bit more I really feel like a chemist here okay so that is 100 milliliter and then we're going to take our 20 degree water and we're going to pour it all the way back up to the whoa shoot it's my phone wet Big, big mess. Okay, there we go. We're like right at 1,000. So, um, if I take this out, does that change? Um, no, it's pretty good. Okay. So there we have one liter, and I guess I have to mix it. I didn't actually buy like a mixer. I don't know why I can't just use the thermometer to mix it, and then at the same time the thermometer can temperature it which it says it's still 20 degrees in there, so that's pretty good. So just mix that up. Great, and that's my developer. For the stop app, we want a 119 ratio, which I believe means that if I were using a liter, I would want 50 milliliters of the mix, but I'm going to do 500 milliliters and then just do 25. Yeah, I think that's right, 25 milliliters of stop bath. Okay, so this is me sightseeing. We're trying our best here. In here to get 25 milliliters. 
try to like pour it a little slower so there's like bub no bubbles. There. That looks good. So it's 25 milliliters of that. And I'm gonna put that in first and then fill it up to 500. And pour this guy in here. So we get to 500 milliliters total. So something I also didn't look at is at the bottom of the Patterson tank it says that one roll of 35 millimeter film requires 290 milliliters of solution. That's how deep in it is. So I'm gonna only need to pour in 290 milliliters of each of these items. We'll, we'll try to do that. I have another graduated cylinder. So I'm going to do my fixer in this container after I measure it in the measuring cup. So I'm gonna do 100 milliliters of a fixer and then fill it up to 400 of water. Okay, so I'm putting 100 milliliters of fixer in here. So that's 200, give or take. Okay, so the instructions that I read online said that you should actually rinse your film first to get it to like the right temperature. So the thing I'm going to do first is just pour in water and soak it for three to five minutes. I guess that brings the temperature so it's like all even and stuff. Seems like a lot. So we're going to dump this out. I'm going to be using this container. Usually I'd be doing this in, this, in the bathroom or the kitchen, but just so I can set up and show it off. That's just been rinsed now. It's a little pre-rinse for my film, so it's all the right temperature. Great. Okay, and now we're ready. So we're gonna start with putting in the developer. Okay, so we're ready, moment of truth. And I only need to put in about 300 milliliters, so when it gets to 700, I'll stop. That should be about right. Okay, and then put this lid back on. Okay, so now I think the important thing was to agitate it, so I'm going to start the timer. The important thing is going to be to agitate it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The first ten seconds, drop it down. And then I'm going to agitate it every 30 seconds for the rest of the eight minute timer. Like maybe just like three times, I don't know, or is it ten seconds, I don't know. You're supposed to tap it so the bubbles don't collect on the film. So now we're at 5 minutes and 30 seconds on the timer. Okay, there's one minute left on the clock. Agitate it again. And I'm going to get ready to dump it out. You're supposed to dump it out when there's 15 seconds left on the clock. I can smell the chemicals. It really does remind me of high school darkroom days. I love that. Okay, so now it says 15 seconds remaining. So that's when I'm going to dump this right out. Get all that out of there. Woo! And then I'm going to pour my stop bath in. And remember, I don't need all of this stop bath. I need most of it. So, I'll just pour it in. That's my alarm. I like 200 left in there. Great. And then I think the stop bath, I just have to agitate for 10 seconds. A good solid 10 seconds. It just says it doesn't matter a lot how much exactly. One, two, three. Just like agitate it like this. Get it all around the film. Now I'm going to dump that one out. Okay. Pull that all that out of there. And you don't have to rinse in between these steps. Which is like. Which I thought was surprising. Now the fixer. So this was 400. You can probably just pour that all in. It's probably fine. Um, how'd that happen? Okay, fixer. And the fixer says for two to five minutes. I don't know about the agitating on that. I don't know how I'm supposed to agitate that. I'm supposed to just basically agitate this every 30 seconds also. 
So I'm doing that, and I'm at two minutes right now. Fixer. Well, the fixer is something that you can keep for next time, so I will just pull that back in. Okay. And then the last step is the rinsing. I've done all the processes. I did all the rinsing in the sink because it takes five to ten minutes. And I also did the um, wet wetting wash aid agent in there as well. So now is the moment of truth where we take the film out of the roll. And then we're going to dry it and hang it on a clip. So I'm not really exactly sure how you take it off the roll carefully. It's kind of bent funny anyway. Like this seems tricky. Oh, it seems like I've kind of got some green stuff on the edge. I don't know if that's good. That's probably bad. That probably means I didn't rinse it very well. Oh, there's all kinds of problems with this film, probably. Well, also though, some of the photos look like they were. Some of them not as much. But that could be because of the camera I was using. Maybe there was a problem with some of them overshooting. Um, and then this end of it is empty. Okay, so here we go. Okay. I'm going to hang it. I don't have clips. I'm going to hang it on this hanger like this. This is an experimental roll. And you know what? If any of them work, that's cool. It's not really working, is it? Yeah, so some, so, so you can see some of these worked. At least some of them did. There. See, this is a film. So some of these obviously didn't work. Some of them might have. That could also be the camera and the problem that I had with it. it. Might have been double shooting. Some of these look like they did. A little bit. So that's my first attempt. Uh, I don't, I'm just not sure about this green bits on the edges. These green bits probably is some kind of developing solution. So I'm going to go hang this up and then I will report back with the results.